Can you hear me, everyone? Yes. Okay, so hello. Hi. Everybody, nice to, mm, I'm very happy to see you that, mm, that on this presentation. And it's my big pleasure to, to be allowed to present at this conference. This presentation is about something else than what you have seen so far, because my impression from these conferences is that Perl is useful only for the web pages or web applications. And I just wanted to show you that we are using Perl for something else. We are using Perl to help produce real cars that you can, you can, you can then go and buy. And we have some solution which I will now show you. Just very briefly, I work for Usen Logistics. I'm there almost 10 years. This is a Japanese company. We are part of the NYK group, which, um, which is operating um, mainly, mainly sh uh, ships. It has one of the biggest fleets in the world of, 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 of cargo, cargo ships. In Czech Republic, we do many things like ocean air freight forwarding, contract logistics, and we do also special projects like RFID or this sequence deliveries. The solution I will talk about is that we, in 2005 we received task from the, from the local car factory that is, that is located very near to our premises that they need some parts to be delivered to the production line as the car goes on the line because they don't know before what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, color the car will be and some, some parts that are depending on, on the actual production. So we had to build uh, like something like buffer warehouse for certain parts because if the producer is 300 kilometers away and you have one, one hour to deliver the part, then you cannot do it from, from, from that distance. And what we do, we receive the message and prepare the parts so that they can be assembled right to the, right to the production line. Because it was new for us, we were relying in 2005 on what was recommended to us and it was recommended that we use some proprietary solution coming from France running on Windows Server. We survived with this one year and then, then we decided that Windows is not useful for production environment. <laughs> so we rewrote it to something normal <laughs> and the decision was quite clear. So we took Perl, Linux and because we need to print some labels and things like this, we, we, we included all these technologies that you can see like context or context or how, however you want to, want to pronounce it for the labels generation. We do printing and finally we made the server virtual. Then it was running, running, running and in 2012 we looked at the code and we said, oh, who wrote this? This is horrible. And we decided it's time for, it was time for refactoring. So we, we rewrote it using, using modern technologies like Moose, Modern Perl, uh, Template Toolkit, we generate also barcodes. And finally, we decided to use database as well, which is very advanced technology. I will comment on that a bit later. Uh, the problem, sorry, I will, yeah, okay. I will, I will cover that in details in two slides. So just to give you, give you some idea about what's going on is that the car goes on the production line and at a certain point, the first yellow star, we know what kind of parts will be needed and we receive call of message for the part. It's approximately one minute, one message. 24-7, because the, the, the factory is producing every minute one car. And then we have to receive the message. We have to print some 
labels for the, for the um, warehouse stuff, so they know what to pick. We need to pick the parts, assemble them, check if the quality is okay, because you don't want scratched parts on your, on your car when you buy it. Load it to truck, and then bring it to the factory and give it straight at the, at the, at the line in the exact sequence. For this, we have one and a half hours, about, from the receiving message to the, to the physical delivery of, of part, which is bringing some challenges on, on its own. If we look to more details, we need to receive the message, confirm it, translate part numbers, because the, the car factory and the, the producers are using different part numbers. Print labels with barcode, some pallet labels, delivery notes, and we developed also solution for or our own communication protocol with the conveyor, conveyor belt machines. There are some parts are like assembled and the, the machine can, can uh, receive instruction via, via FTP, via, via our via own communication protocol. And we created some web overviews for the warehouse stuff so that they know what, 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 will, what will come and, and how much behind they are. Yeah. Then we... Always behind. <laughs> then we deliver the parts physically and afterwards the, 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 the accounting is going on. Like we need to know the accounting software, let know what we should invoice. We produce all kind of daily, weekly, monthly reports or customize. And surprisingly, we need to back up the data. So for the first part, the receiving message, as I said originally, this was some Windows solution written in Delphi with their own database. And this database was lovely. It, it, after three months, it started crashing, usually on Sunday at three in the morning. So then the procedure, the, the procedure was that they, they, they woke us up from the warehouse. We had to call to France, wake some, somebody. And this person connected and was, was repairing two hours database. And after one year, we, and migration to Linux and Perl, this is running smooth, smooth, smooth. We don't know about it most of the time. Technically, it's a daemon listening on a port. And there is a spe there is a own communication protocol for the message confirmations. We made every message a moose object, and still because we have this very bad experience with database, we are saving every message as a text file, and then process the text file. We still didn't even though we have now reporting done in 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 MySQL or Maria database, we don't trust the database enough to, to, to migrate to it fully, maybe later. So then for the, for the message processing, we print the labels so that the, the people in the warehouse know what to pick. We print all kind of labels for the pallets and we communicate the, with the machine that is preparing the part physically. For this, we use template toolkit and in context context we create PDF that, that, uh, that gets printed finally on the printer. Mm. One thing we found useful is the Raspberry Pi. We use it now in our production because it's an interesting story. The, the people in the warehouse they need to know, need to see what, uh, what messages are in the queue. But when we gave them normal computer, they were surfing in the, during the night shift. <laughs> <laughs> and the Raspberry Pi is, 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 is very nice because it has only two USB ports. One is occupied by the Wi-Fi card, so they don't have enough USB ports to stick keyboard and mouse. <laughs> So <laughs> since then, <laughs> we have no problem with, with, with night, night shift surf, <laughs> surfing the net. So what exactly is that? <laughs> yeah, well, they could, but 
<laughs> they don't have they don't have the login to, to the Raspberry. <laughs> yeah, shh, don't tell them. <laughs> okay, then we del deliver the parts, and we have all kind of NetFTP uh, connections for the for the data report sending. We create uh, Excel spreadsheets using spreadsheet right Excel, uh, Excel for the for the reports and all kind of backups both data and the, the whole virtual machine and and everything because if it crashes then you maybe it's good that you have one minute before it crashed the data otherwise otherwise you cannot you cannot produce anything and so far only reports are generated from the database maybe Later we will migrate everything there, but so far it's working. We are using text files. For the future, we or what we learned, it's very easy. Don't trust anything. <laughs> Don't trust that if you have message number one, then afterwards will be message number two. <laughs> because it usually is, unless somebody decides to do something. And in general, error handling. Okay. If you cannot print, if the communication is down, and it's Sunday, 3 in the morning, what should happen? And you have one hour to deliver the part. How do we make sure about data consistency? How, do, how are we sure that what the message that we received, asking for some part, is correct? That, it, uh, that the part is, shouldn't, be, shouldn't be something else? How we know how, when to confirm message? Because we start receiving message and then the communication goes down. And is it received? Is it not received? Should we confirm it? Not. Also, we shouldn't trust that the day has 24 hours and sta is starting on, 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 on midnight because the shift pattern is very, differ uh, is very, very different. And it can happen that the day is not starting on midnight, but is starting at 5 in the morning or 5 in the afternoon. Especially for the reports, then because then you get all kind of data with some date and everybody means something else by, by the date. Also, what kind of information we should show to the operators, what, what they need to see. This is about ergonomics and we are still still fighting with this because they we should show them as much data as possible but on the other hand it should be very simple and, and easy to want to see we even had projector or beamer showing on, on the warehouse wall so that they could see it from everywhere but after we exchanged three lamps we gave up also the warehouse environment is not very not very um, clean it's always dust, dusty, so if you, could, if you put anything with a ventilator, then, then you can go and vacuum it every month. So that's why I like Lovesberry Pi, because, because it has no ventilator whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> and the dust stays on the box, and you just, <laughs> you just clean it. Yeah, when is a shipment considered chipped? And now, now we receive some surprises, like, like two suppliers, same part, but two part numbers. And, or, sorry, same part number, but, but two different products. So, oh, oh, it was talking about data consistency. This is, or, <laughs> this is another challenge for the database. <laughs> what do we need to lock? Because after 10 years, the locks are huge and huge. And we are thinking to, imp to use some CM or this kind of approach just, just for the log analysis. And so on and so on. What we are sure we will stay with Linux and Perl. Maybe we will migrate to Dancer for the, for the web overviews because Dancer is cool and it's very, very easy to write. Uh, write web, um, web applications in it. 
We're thinking about RFID-based parts marking for, for the inbound and outbound, just to be sure that what is on the production uh, or on the lane, set lane to, to go out is correct. And we need to find some, some clever web-based uh, switching solution for the problem of two parts, two suppliers, say, same part number. And finally, I just wanted to tell you that Perl is great not only for the web world, but it's helping to produce real things that, that, that um, you can finally buy. So for me, Perl is far from that. That's all. Any questions? Yeah. I haven't clearly understood. Uh, do you have only automated uh, software which works in the background, this full system, or you have different various uh, user interfaces? And if yes, uh, how many people ma maintain all of that? Uh, this is, it's automated. It's, it's, uh, there is no, 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 user, no user input. We just have some, some web-based reports for the, for the warehouse staffs. I'm looking. Using using template toolkit and HTML table just to show them the information that that is that is what's going what's in the queue what what has been shipped what they are working on now and what what how much luck they have. But all all data uh, all data receiving translation and this is done automatically using using cron cron script. Okay. Uh, you are in a very big company, so were you independent to make all of these choices, or did you have to discuss a little lot with, uh, with mm. the upper management to, to convince them to use that technology? I was, I was very happy to receive the trust to decide it finally myself, because the, the, the solution that was recommended to us didn't work, and there was no other solution, so, so I was given the trust to, 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 to build it with my team. Uh, you have mentioned uh, context in your slides. Uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, misunderstood uh, what is it is. It is a model or what is it? No, it's a, if you know tech, tech or latex, yes, latex, yes, yes. this is something uh, basically say the same, um, but it has some more, some more libraries or some, some more functions. I, I, it's a Perl library or? No, 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 it's a, it's a standalone application. Ah, uh, okay. You, you create this dot, dot text files and then, then you call then you call the context and it produces PDF for you and is uh, open source yes mm, okay, thank you I can give you the link afterwards if you want uh, how do you handle problems in the real world like uh, the part is not found it actually doesn't there uh, isn't there or the truck the delivery truck actually breaks during delivery this mm. sort of thing yeah well of course, we have contingency plans and, and disaster recovery plans and, and all kind of things. But it's, uh, the, the solution is if, if this stops, then immediately switch to backup solution, which is basically based on human communication and receiving uh, some Excel data with, with, with the messages, because you cannot stop the delivery. And this, this give us, gives us maybe one or two hours to fix. Of course. The, the people are annoyed because they have to, they have to, if it doesn't work automatically, they have to retype some, some, something to Excel, they are not, not, not very happy. Question, but not actually about the code. You said there's a message every minute and you said there's an hour and a half. Are you sending a truck every minute or a... No, 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 you, 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 the message comes every minute, yeah. but the truck leaves when the truck is full. Okay. So every, I don't know, 40, 40 parts or something. Question from me: How how do you test it? What what, what kind of things have you uh, used for that? Yeah, well, we use test spec. So so before before the migration to Moose uh, and and the, you know make it modular, it was a mess. But now 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 we have about about 300 tests for running running for each module, and and then and then we we go up to the level of mm, checksumming the files and making sure that the, the hash is correct and so, and so, and so on. 
Uh, one quick question. Uh, uh, maybe two, if you're good. How come that you choose Perl? I, 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 I like it very much. From where? <laughs> Did you work before on that? Um, no, but um, I, I personally am using Perl since 2002, be, uh, before I was, I was uh, developing in, in Java. And switching from Java to Perl was a big relief for me. <laughs> uh, uh, how do you deploy the code? Uh, how often? Or is it something continuous? Or do, uh, do, do releases uh, like uh, monthly? or? We we have the code in a JIT, JIT repository, and uh, we can do upgrades only when the when the when the production is not going on. So it's like a two two times two times per year. <laughs> <laughs> Except emergency fixes, of course, which don't happen. <laughs> Th thank you very much. Thank you.